from our previous discussion, you will recall that we studied like charges repel one another. That is, positive repels positive and negative repels negative. We also learned that unlike charges attracted one another. In other words, positive attracted negative. Now, what do you think? How are these repulsions or attractions taking place? How are they moving away from one another or coming close to one another? We saw in previous cases that there was no contact in between the two bodies. There was no contact even in the case of attraction prior to attraction. So how do you think the forces were being exerted? Obviously, there must be some kind of an invisible force that is acting on these bodies that is actually causing them to move apart or come close to one another. Let us get to the depth of this mystery. Now here we consider an animation. Over here, a small ball is kept on the surface of the water as you can see. The orange ball is the ball that has been kept on water. Another ball is kept on the water and is tied with a string. Now you can see that when the orange ball is still, it is because the green ball is also still. Now if we shake the green ball with the help of the string, you will notice that the orange ball is also getting disturbed. Now why do you think this is happening? This is happening because when we are jerking or shaking the green ball with the help of the string, disturbances are created in water. These disturbances travel forward in the form of waves and these waves hit the orange ball. So as a result, that orange ball is getting disturbed. Now what can we say? We can say that it is because of the presence of the green ball and the disturbance that it is creating, the orange ball is getting disturbed or we can say that there is some sort of a disturbance field around the green ball when it is being shaken. So a similar thing happens in case of charges. There is also a field around charges. Let us find out more about field. Now a charge is able to influence another charge because of a force that is known as electrostatic force. In the previous case we saw that the orange ball was getting influenced by the green ball. Similarly, one charge can influence another charge by exerting a force on that charge. This force is known as the electrostatic force. So the electrostatic force is given by F. Now I mentioned something like a field that was being developed around the green ball, a field of disturbance. You will be interested to learn that this field of disturbance is also present around charges. It is known as electric field. Now how can we find out the strength of the electric field? If a charge is brought near another charge, it will exert some force on it. So the force that is exerted on the charge per magnitude of charge is known as the electric field. In other words, we can say that a unit charge is being brought in contact or in the presence of another charge. A unit charge is being brought near another charge. So obviously, this unit charge will experience some force. The force experienced by a unit charge is the field, the electric field for the other charge. So we can define electric field as the force exerted per quantity charge on the test charge. Now we consider how the field is represented in the case of positive charges and negative charges. How we can distinguish positive and negative based on the electric field. Now if you look at this picture, you will see that certain lines have been drawn which are pointing outwards from the positive charge, from the arrowheads on these lines. Now consider this scenario. We have studied that like charges repel one another. So when a positive chest charge is brought near this charge, what do you think happens? They repel one another. So because these charges are repelling one another, the field lines, that is the electric field lines for the positive charge are considered as pointing 
outwards because when a positive charge is being brought near this charge which is also positive it is being repelled so we can say that the field lines are pointing outwards the field lines are nothing but a method to depict the electric field around a charge now similarly we can find out the direction of field lines in the case of a negative charge now if a negative charge is brought near a positive charge or into a positive field what happens obviously since they are unlike charges they attract one another now because they are attracting one another the field lines have been taken inwards to the charge that is as you can see from the picture the field lines are moving in to the negative charge so as a result the electric field lines for a negative charge is taken as pointing inwards now let me show you another interesting video now in this case you will find that the balloon has been charged by rubbing it so when the balloon is being brought close to water you will find that water is bending more towards the balloon and when the balloon is kept far away from the water you will find that the path of the water is bending less so what can we say we can conclude that when the balloon is near water it is bending more or getting attracted more so this force that is the electrostatic force developed due to charges this electrostatic force depends on distance as we saw in the case of the balloon when it was close to the water it attracted it more when it was far away from the water it attracted it less this is similar to the case where you get the aroma of your favorite dish from the kitchen if you are far away from the kitchen the aroma will be faint but if you are very close to the kitchen the aroma will be very strong electrostatic force also behaves in a similar manner closer two charges are more is the electrostatic force exerted farther two charges are less is the electrostatic force exerted now we consider another video which shows us a very interesting concept over here you will notice that an uncharged straw is kept on the top of the bottle notice that the charge on the straw is nil that is it is uncharged now the man's hand is rubbed and is brought close to the straw as you can see that there is no contact in between the straw and the man's hand but the straw is moving towards the hand a similar thing is carried out with the same straw and spoon the straw is again uncharged and the spoon is rubbed so after rubbing the spoon it is brought close to the straw again you will notice that the straw is moving towards the spoon even though there is no contact between the straw and the spoon so what do you think is happening over here we can say that electrostatic force is a non contact force that is there need not be a contact in between the two charges for force to be exerted we saw this in the case of the balloon and can previously where the balloon was able to attract the can without touching it and even in this case we saw the balloon attracting water without touching it and also we saw the man's hand or the spoon attracting the straw without touching it so electrostatic force is a non contact force we also saw that just like two charges that are unlike can attract one another electrostatic force can also influence objects that are uncharged because in the previous case we saw that the straw that was placed on the bottle was uncharged and the spoon and the man's hand which were charged were able to influence this uncharged straw so electrostatic force can influence both charged as well as uncharged objects now let us say we have been asked to find out whether an object is charged or not so how do you think we can find that out can we use attraction we cannot use attraction to find out whether or not an object is charged why because let's say a body 
is negatively charged and it is brought near a positively charged body so obviously there will be attraction but even if an uncharged body is brought near a positively charged body there will be attraction because as we saw that a charged body can influence itself on an unlike body on a similar body or even an uncharged body so clearly attraction is not the best way to check whether an object is charged or not because in this case even an uncharged object is getting attracted to the positive charge so how can we check that whether an object is charged repulsion is the best test to check whether or not an object is charged why because let's say we have been given two charged objects and we bring them close to one another if they are repelling one another we can say with complete affirmation that they are both charged and they are both charged in a similar manner because they are repelling one another they would not have repelled if the charges on them were not similar or even if one of the objects was uncharged so taking a quick recap we learned a few things we learned that every charge has an electric field around it it is due to this electric field it is able to influence other charges kept in its vicinity every charge exerts a force due to this electric field on any other charge this force is known as electrostatic force now this electrostatic force is not only exerted by charges on other charges but also on neutral objects and we also learned that attraction is not the best way by which we can find out if a body is charged or not because a charged object can attract another charged object or even an uncharged object thus repulsion is the best test to check if a given object is charged or not we also learned that electrostatic force is a non contact force that is there is no contact in between the charges when the force is applied 